Today is a big one. Today we're gonna to talk about generating funding for your documentary film project. So stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna tell you guys how I generated over $30,000 in funding for my project. And this has nothing to do with asking for government grants. This is real stuff that I have used, proven techniques that I'm gonna break down for you guys. So stick around because we're getting into it. So the first thing that you want to think about is your documentary topic. The question that you need to ask yourself is, is my documentary actually worth watching? You got to ask yourself, who is my audience and are they big enough or wealthy enough to help me fund my documentary project? And listen, no bullshit. You have to sit down and really be real with yourself. Is it a trending topic? Can you easily access your audience? Do they have Facebook pages? Are there influencers that you could reach out to that can kind of help you promote the project or bring hype or awareness? around your project? Are there podcasts that you can go on? How can you get involved with your community? Are they easily accessible? And then the big one is, can you offer them value? Can you really offer them real value that they're going to want to be entertained with or consumed with? Or are you helping a community? Is your project bringing something to light that a lot of people want awareness to? You have to think about all of these different things. What's your angle? How can you get your documentary trending? How can you get your documentary in front of as many eyeballs as possible? Now thinking about my project Law of the Goat, there was a lot of things surrounding it and a lot of reasons why I chose to go forth with a project like this and I felt comfortable and confident to put my time, money, and my, my passion into it. I did a lot of research on MMA before I decided this was something that I wanted to do. And I actually came to find out that MMA was the second fastest growing sport in the world when you talked about participants and you talked about fans. That means that there is a global interest in this topic. In the last 10 to 15 years, MMA has become a multi-billion dollar industry. And the thing that I like most about MMA is that it's extremely easy to access their fan base. Anybody that follows the UFC or One Championship or any of these major MMA organizations are actually potential fans of your documentary. So when you're thinking about your documentary topic from the very beginning, you gotta think to yourself, who is my fan base? How do I access them? And is this topic worth talking about, worth watching? And can it be a viable option for me to explore and put my time, effort, money, and passion into? Now, let's say you got your topic and you're, you're solid with it. You've done your research, you feel like it's a good topic, you know how to access your audience, great. Your next step is to creating social media accounts and a website for your film. And this is very crucial to the success of generating funding for your project, so make sure that you take time and you polish your website, you polish your social media accounts, and you're really creating valuable content on both. Now, if you're actually able to get people to go to your social media accounts or website, you have to be able to capture their attention and more importantly, a way to contact them. Now the goal every time someone goes to your website or social media is to capture either a follow or an email to make sure you have a way of promoting your film or your project to them. So when you're creating your website, give some sort of incentive away for free to be able to capture their email so you can keep them updated on what the film is doing, keep them updated on what's going on. And when you guys get a chance, go check out the Law of the Go website and Instagram page. Here you can see a really good example of how to capture attention. Before I even attempted to go out and get funding for this project, I made sure that I spent a lot of time on the social media sites and the website. That way when people go to those, they feel the hype, they feel that it's not just a docu-series, it's almost like a movement that's being released. And people wanna be a part of a movement. People wanna be part of something that is trending or something that's being talked about or something that just looks awesome. So that's something that you have to keep in your mind as you go along and as you create your social media pages and your website. So at the absolute peak of the Law of the Go Instagram page, it was at about 12,000 followers. And as we all know, having a strong following behind your project and having you know a lot of numbers is extremely powerful for many reasons. We grew to 12,000 followers in about three or four months. And there was a lot that went behind growing that following. Number one, the gym was constantly reposting our stuff, liking and tagging and engaging with it constantly because every time we put something out, it just 
boosted the numbers drastically. So we were already kind of starting off on a pedestal. And then we were also posting two to three times a day, minimum five days a week. Now the kind of content that we were using was snippets from what we would film, behind the scenes photos and behind the scenes videos of us in production. And we were constantly updating people on what was going on with the series, how we were producing it, the hype behind it. I'm not gonna lie, it was extremely demanding to be able to create all that content, but that's how we grew such a following on the Law of the Go page. And like I said in the beginning, a strong following is powerful and you're going to want to have a strong following or at least somewhat of a voice in your community before you go out and try to raise funding for your project. Now, the advice that I would give to anyone just starting out with their film project is try to create a system. That way, every time you film, you can organize your footage and you can put together eight to 15 second snippets of what you shot as quickly as possible. What I would do is take two or three days and edit as much content as possible for the month. You also want to try to get someone to film you you or your team in production. That way you could constantly update people on the production of the film, show the behind the scenes, get people that are outside of that community and maybe just in the film community also interested in the project as well. I can't tell you how many times filmmakers have followed the law of the goat account just because of the awesome cinematography or the really awesome behind the scenes shots that we were getting of us filming this project and reach out to people in your community, engage with them, have conversations, ask them questions about what you're doing, about what they're doing. And who knows, you might even stumble upon somebody that is really interested in your project as you're building this community that is interested in either helping you, tagging your post, reposting what you do, or maybe even helping you with the project somehow. And that, my friends, is how you generate hype for your film. When you've done the work and you've built somewhat of a following and you have a voice in your community, what you're going to want to start thinking about is crowdfunding. Now, for those that you don't know what crowdfunding is, sites like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Seed and Spark, all of these sites, basically what you can do is you can put your project on them, showcase everything about your project. That means photos, videos, everything that you have on your project, you could showcase it on these sites and people can donate to your project. Not only that, but you could also offer rewards. So a lot of people offer things like t-shirts, keychains, even digital downloads of the movie when it's released. Anything that you could offer your community to buy or to donate could help you raise some funding. Like I said before, there is definitely power in numbers and power in your following. If you do have a strong following and you do have a lot of people that are interested in your project and you create one of these crowdfunding campaigns, you really could get your entire project funded. Now we created an Indiegogo for Law of the Goat and we raised about $2,000. That's absolutely nothing to write home about, but it did help us a little bit and it did allow us to meet a lot of people in the industry. In fact, it helped us link up with two producers that are now a part of Law of the Goat and helping us sell this project to major streaming platforms. So it's not all about the money when you think about crowdfunding. A lot of the times it's about getting other exposure and other people interested in your project that could possibly help you take it to the next level. Now, before you think about crowdfunding, do not, and I repeat, do, not do this before you have a following. You will absolutely waste your time and money if you try to do a crowdfunding campaign before you build an audience or a way to contact these people in your niche or in your fan base that would be interested in helping you fund your project. Another great thing that you could use from these crowdfunding sites is if you're having trouble thinking about a topic for your film, you can just browse through these sites and see what's actually working. You can check out the documentaries or you can check out the short films that are actually getting funded. And if you're smart, you can find a way to access their fan base and promote your project to their fans. When you're thinking about generating funding for your project, you have to think outside the box like this. I can't stress that enough. You really have to think about all the different ways you can get your project in front of people that are actually willing and able to donate or help you fund your project. Definitely take this into consideration as you are trying to raise capital and funding for your project. Now we're gonna talk about a big one and that is sponsorship. I will say that this is by far the hardest way to raise money for your project and the most time consuming, but if you are able to get a sponsor on board for your project, the sky is the limit for the amount of money that you could raise. I've seen anywhere from 5,000 to $100,000 sponsorship just to be able to have their products in your film. But just like everything else, before you get a meeting with a possible sponsor, there are a few things that you need to do so that way you have everything lined up and you could actually show the 
value of your project to them and they have a clear understanding of what you're going to deliver for what they're going to pay for. So let's say that you have a growing fan base on social media, you have a nice website that looks legitimate and shows promise in your project. You have a lot of your project kind of already shot. You could showcase maybe a trailer or little snippets on social media of what you've already done. That way you could show yourself as something real that is actually moving towards a finish line. Now you're ready to actually reach out to possible sponsors. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is create a sponsorship package. And what this package needs to clearly break down is the deliverables or brand placement they will receive throughout your documentary. This package also needs to have all the information about your project, the characters, what it's about, and most importantly, when you plan on releasing your project. What companies really want to know is the potential of eyeballs that they're going to have on their product or brand. So the more information you could bring to the table, the more security they're going to have in backing your project. Now, this is just a general idea of what you should have in your sponsorship package. If you really want me to break down everything that I put in my sponsorship package for Law of the Goat and how I raised over $25,000 in sponsorship money, let me know in the comments down below and i'll be sure to create that video for you guys but i want at least 20 people to hit me up and say yo please make this sponsorship package for me and i will do so now the last thing on the list and definitely the last thing that i would suggest doing is creating products like t-shirts posters really any promotional material that you could create for your project and sell it online merchandising merchandising what's that merchandising come I'll show you. Merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. Space Falls the t-shirt. Space Falls the coloring book. Space Falls the lunchbox. Space Falls the breakfast cereal. Space Falls the flamethrower. <laughs> that kids love this one. Now, I kind of got lucky with this because I had a sponsor approach us on our Indiegogo page, letting us know that they'd be interested in making all of our t-shirts for free for us for promotion on our website and promotion on our social media pages. So we were able to keep 100% of the profit from the t-shirts. But I will say that we generated about two or $3,000 in sales, and it was a huge headache because we had to figure out how to ship them all out. Some people didn't like the way they came out, or some people wanted a different size. So we had to get them back and, and ship them back out. You know, you're a filmmaker. You're not a clothing company. You're not a t-shirt maker. You are a filmmaker and you're trying to figure out ways to fund your project. And while this could be a viable option for you, I don't think it's the best option. But that being said, it depends on what kind of situation that you're in. Who knows? Maybe the topic that you have or maybe the shirts that you have, people really like them and your fan base or your niche audience is really interested in buying those and you make a ton of money. That's definitely possible. I found that it was kind of more headache than what it was worth at the end of the day. And without the sponsor, I think we would have made half the amount of money that we made. So it's definitely an option and it's definitely something that you guys should think about, but I would definitely leave that for last and make sure that you exhaust all the other options and all the other ideas that I gave you from the beginning of the video. So that is it for today. I hope that you guys got some valuable information today. I hope this helps you generate funding for your documentary projects. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.